I said I wasn't going to share this story, but why not, y'all? Get in here, get in here, get in here. He left me heartbroken. It felt like my heart was ripped out of my chest. I'm going to share this story with you, baby. Sit back, okay? Whatever you're doing, put the earphones in your ears if you're at work, honey. We're going to just go through this together because there's a powerful lesson in here that I think can help you all the way that it helped me. So I'm going to share it with y'all, okay? So huh, let's just jump into it, all right? You have to picture this. It was a couple years ago, and although I said that I wanted to be in a relationship, although I said that I wanted to have someone for companionship, for fun, you know what I mean? Intimacy. I really wasn't putting any energy into it. I really wasn't. You know, anytime anyone would invite me out anywhere, I would say no. I would make an excuse. I felt like, if anything, I was dating my sofa. You see what I'm saying? I was always at home. I was always, you know, um, just with my family. I was never putting myself out there. But in this story, I'm going to share with you the person who broke me out of my shell in a really, 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 really big way. So I have to pause for a minute because when I think of him, I get a little emotional. Thank you for sharing this video, Susie and Sandy and Jennifer. After you share this video, let me know so I can call y'all out. So you have to picture this. This was years ago, okay? And my routine was this. I would work after I got finished working. After I got finished working, you know what I would do? I would come home, talk to my couple friends on the phone that I always talk to, talk to my mother, and that was that. You know what I mean? Film, be done, do whatever that do for the day, but my life was not doing much at the time. Well, this one particular day, it was like a, yeah, it has been a Friday, it's like a Friday evening, I get a call from one of my good friends, and my friend says, hey, what you doing tomorrow morning? I was like, well, I was planning to, you know, go get my car washed, get my nails done, blah, blah, blah. My routine. You know, we all got our routines, all right? Comment below if you know, if you know what I mean. You got a routine. And so, um, and thank you for sharing this video for those of who are sharing it. And call, let, me, sh let me know y'all share it so I can call y'all out. But listen, listen, listen. I got a story for you. You know how my stories are, baby, okay? So sit tight. And get a cup of coffee, get a glass of wine, whatever you need. So anyway, because it's a good one. Um, he, so anyway, my friend says, no, nah, come on out with us. Um, we're going to go to this festival this weekend. I said, a festival? No, nah, baby, I ain't playing for no festival, honey. I'm like, uh, -uh I didn't plan for that, okay? I ain't, I'm not going to no festival. Nothing like that. They said, no, nah, just come on, come on, come on. Just go to this festival. We got a hotel room already. Everything, everything's already set up. You know what I mean? You'll be fine. You'll be comfortable. Just come. One of the other people cancel. We want you to come, 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 come. I was like, ugh. I was like, I really am not, oh no. And then I saw this thing, I think it was Shonda Rhimes, where she was talking about living in like a year of yes or something like that. I remember somebody saying something about yes. And I was just like, I said, you know what? Let me go ahead and do it. So I called my friend back and I was like, all right, I'll go with y'all to the festival. And so we went out there, it was, we drove, it wasn't that far to drive to it, um, but it was far enough that we needed to, you know, stay out there for the night. So we get to the festival, and when we get there, you have to understand this, honey, okay? I, they say I'm an old soul, an old soul. I know y'all look at me and see this old beautiful mug, honey, but I'm an old soul, honey, all right? Because of the fact that, you know, for me personally, I don't like to be in crowds. I don't like too much loud music. You know, I like things to be subdued and kind of calm, you know, and to add insult to injury, I don't even drink. You see what I'm saying? So with that said, it's like I, I don't have that social, you know, el that social lubricant to get me going through the, to get me going through any situation, y'all. So anyway, so I'm there. And as soon as we get into the festivals, like this little area where they were like, where people was getting, you know, their drinks and their things like that, just kind of socializing. The music was in another area. This gentleman walks by me. Okay. I would later learn his name was Gary. And you will learn how I learned his name <laughs> in just a moment. So, I see him walking by. He's got on sunglasses, because we're outside. He's got on sunglasses. Um, he's wearing, like, a nice tank top. And through his tank top, I could see his muscles. So he had, like, he was really, really well built. You know what I mean? Um, and he walks by me. And he, I remember what he was wearing so well. He was wearing these, like, grayish shorts. Okay? He was wearing some nice little, like, some nice little, I don't know, like, not flip-flop kind of shoes, but some kind of, like, shoe like that or whatever. And he's just, like, he was chill or whatever. And he walks by me, and immediately when he walks by me, he's got, like, a beer in his hand. And I'm thinking, party boy, but he was so handsome. 
He was so handsome. But I immediately dismissed him. I dismissed him as a party boy. I wasn't paying him any mind. It, it, I had no reason to pay him any mind. It was like so many people there. I mean, it had to be been, even in that one little area we were saying there was hundreds of people inside the festival, if not thousands of people in there. I was not focused on even one person, but I did remember seeing him walk by because it was hard for me not to see him because when he walked by me, how I remember the sunglasses when he walked by me, he takes the sunglasses, pushes them down, and looks over the rim at me. It looks me straight in the eyes, just like this. He got his beer in one hand, holds the sunglasses, and goes like this to me. I look back like I ain't never go no, like I ain't never been nowhere, right? I'm like, is he talking to me? And then my friend says, he looking at you. So I look over at him, he's still looking at me like this. He goes like that again, and I was like, and he raised his beard and kept on walking. Listen, listen, listen. Thank you, Anita, for sharing this video as well as Ella for sharing this video. Okay, so already. My heart is pounding, honey, all right? Who don't like a little bit of good attention? You know what I mean? Who don't like a little bit of something just to make you feel pretty, make you feel noticed, especially when you were like me, somebody who for the most part was spending most of the time in the house, never going anywhere, always turning down dates. When guys would drop into my DMs and stuff like that, I'd always just shoot them off. My friends were like, you should meet someone, so you should go out and hit us someone. So I didn't want to be in that mess. I was like, mm, dating is this, dating is that. Had my heart broken too many times before. So anyway, I just was like feeling all nice. I'm like, well, this feels good. But I was like, whatever, he's just a party boy. So anyway, we're out at the festival. It was way too loud by the stage. I did not want to be by the stage. My friends had these really good passes, so we could be by the stage. I didn't want to be up there. So after a little while, I made my way right back to that area where other people were at getting their, getting their drinks and getting their stuff. It was kind of just an area where people just could kind of chill. You could kind of hear the music, but you weren't in it too much because that crowd was just too much for me. So I'm standing back there by myself because my friends are in the, in the event having a great time. I have my phone. I'm sitting up there just scrolling on social media, texting other the people just having a good time by myself right it came all this way just to be sitting on my phone y'all know what i mean they, your friends invite you out but you're still in your phone and the next thing i know somebody stands beside me and i can just feel someone standing beside me now you know baby i'm from the hood so when somebody stands too close to me i kind of move over real fast I'm like what you doing you trying to plot something you trying to do something so i feel them standing beside me so i kind of moved over like this and when i moved over they moved over with me i'm like it's all this room out here and they got standing beside me and i was like excuse me Right? I said, excuse me. The hood girl came out. Excuse me. And as soon as I said, excuse me, and turned to him, it was Gary. Right? So I said, excuse me. I look up, and he's standing, and at this point, he has his sunglasses off, and I could see his beautiful eyes. Oh, my goodness. Now, picture it. His skin complexion was a little bit lighter than mine, but his eyes were like this really 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 light shade of brown it was so light you couldn't look away from it and i said i didn't know his eyes looked like that before and i said i said why are you standing so close to me and he said why are you come all this way to be on your phone he was bold but i liked it i said excuse me he said you heard me why you come all this way to be on your phone put your phone away coming back in the festival I was like, it's too much going on in there. It's too loud for me. I'm looking up at him like this, I'm like, he's tall. I'm like, it's too loud in there for me. I don't wanna be in there. I don't like that. He was like, cool. I said, then why, I said, why aren't you in the festival? He was like, I just wanna chill out. I've been here all day. I was like, okay, cool. That's nice. That's nice. And he said, my name is Gary, right? I said, my name is Malcolm. Nice to meet you. And then so, and so I said, nice to meet you. And I'm thinking he's gonna walk away with his quick fast. I, I felt awkward. I felt awkward. I didn't know what to do. And so, and so I'm like, I'm like, okay. I was like, well, nice to meet you. And I turned away. And then he said, you want something to drink? And I was like, I don't drink. And he said, don't worry, I ain't gonna put nothing in your drink. Cause I think he was gonna go buy me a drink. So he jokingly said, don't worry, I ain't gonna put nothing in your drink. I said, I'm not worried about you putting nothing in my drink. I don't drink. And then he was like, you don't want the water? I was like, I would like water. And then so he said, well, then come with me. I'm going to get you some water, right? So we're going, and then we walk by the bar area, like walk completely by the bar area. Thank you so much, Emmanuel, for sharing this video as well. I'm Sh um, Sharia Maria. Thank you for sharing. Let me know y'all share. So we walk by the bar area where people are buying drinks. And then we go to this area where it says VIP or something like that, like super VIP, something VI above VIP. I ain't never seen nothing like that. And so he says, come on with me. I said, I said, oh, I don't have a pass again. And he said, you good, trust me. And then so we just walk right through the security, just let him go. So I'm like, who is this guy? Who is this? I'm thinking he's a party boy, but clearly he's somebody important. 
So we get back through this little this little VIP area, and as soon as we get back there, there's tents, air conditioning, all kinds of stuff. You know, they got the little rain mist things that they be blowing that where it blows out the water, so it kind of gives you a little mist to cool you down. It was nice. And so we go back there, and then um, he said, you said you wanted water? I'm thinking they're going to hand me a bottle of water. Baby, somebody, this person back there looks like they're like a hotel outfit. You know, like the, the service at hotels. And, and so they get a glass, a glass, put some ice in it, pour me um, a bottle of water in there from one of those glass bottle of water. You know what I'm talking about? Like the good kind. Pour me the water in it. Here you go, sir. And so I'm drinking it. I'm back here. My friends don't know where I'm at, but I'm like, I'm clearly in good company. And so I said, um, I said, Gary, I said, um, this is a nice area. I said, it must have cost you a lot to get these passes, huh? Making conversation, right? And so he was like, it didn't cost me a lot. Um, he said, actually, um, I'm working this week and this is my festival. I, I'm one of the people who runs this festival. I said, oh, okay. All right. Because girls, when you looked at him, he did not, I don't want to stereotype. But to me, if I'm being honest, he did not give me I'm running stuff vibes. He gave me, you know, I jumped in my car and came to a festival this weekend. So now this gorgeous, bold guy, right, is I'm finding out is clearly something or somebody. Listen, 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 listen. So we sat back there and we just start talking, talking, talking. He was the most intelligent man. We talked about so many different things. He was so kind. And as we were talking, he did what I love the most. I love him, guys. He was, Tell me, don't you love this too? As we were talking, he would find excuses just to touch my arm. He'd laugh, ha, 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 ha. Grab my arm. You know, um, if someone was trying to walk by me and, I, and it looked like this was bumping to me, he put his hand on my back and said, let me move you over here. He was just so masculine. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. And I'm just saying in there, honey, all right, because you have to understand, I'm five, seven and a half on a good day. And this one here is probably, mm, I don't know, at least a solid six, two. That's why I have to look up at him. You see what I'm saying? And he just was muscular and big in that masculine presence. The girls, I wish you could hear his voice. I wish you could hear his voice. It was this deep, smooth voice. Oh, my goodness, my goodness, my God. And so anyway... We're standing there and we're talking and it felt like it was going on and on and on for hours. Every now and again, he would have to say, I'll be right back. And then he would go, you know, deal with somebody off to the side and come right back. It seemed like whatever he was doing within this, within this organization, he was high enough. We didn't have to do much. People just come to him every now and again and we got to talk. My friends would text me and, you know, at first I was ignoring their text messages. You good? You good? I'm fine, y'all. Just leave me alone. And I didn't want to break the moment. So I didn't want to put my hand in my pocket to get out the cell phone to look at it because I didn't want to disturb the moment. But eventually I pulled out my phone. And I was like, I'm good, y'all. I put in the, in the friends group chat. I'm good in VIP area. I turned on my location tracker, which you should always do when you're out with your friends. Make sure your location tracker is on so your friends can see where you're at. I'm like, I'm good. I'll let you know if anything goes up, goes on, right? Thank you for sharing this video, Ivan and Charlene and Angela. Let me know y'all share it when y'all share it so I can call y'all out. So anyway, he says to me this, as everything was starting to wind down and the lights, you know, like the, um, what do you call it? Like the sun was going down. The fest was going to go on later on into the evening, but at least that part was winding down. He said to me, um, he says, are you hungry? I said, um, I said, yeah, I am. Cause I realized we've been there talking all this time. I hadn't eaten anything outside, just drinking a bottle of water here and there. And then, um, I was like, I am. And then he says, well, let's go get something to eat. And I'm thinking, I do not want no festival food. I don't want no hot dogs. I don't want none of that stuff. I don't want no nachos. Nothing against the body. didn't want none of that. And so, died at that moment. And so, I was like, I said, I'm good. I'm not going to eat any of this stuff. He yeah, already saw what they had. It's no offense to you and your business. But I just don't want none of this food. And then, so, I'm, I can be a little bit like that. I'm just saying. So, anyway, he was like, he says, he says, we can leave here. It's fine. I was like, um, okay, cool. And I'm thinking to myself, should I leave with him? Should I not leave with him? Should I leave with him? Should I not leave with him? But in my mind, I kept thinking of, remember, this is your time for yes. This is your year of yes. You need to say yes. Stop saying no to everything. Saying no has got you always in the house. Saying no and got you not dating nobody. Saying no has you not having the level of intimacy and connection that you want. So say yes. What's the worst that will happen? You've already been here with this man. Clearly, he's a very notable person. Y'all had this conversation. You see who he is. You got his last name because I know how to ask questions. And I did read his little name tag badge. At one point, he had like a badge in his pocket. I could see when it pulled out and I could see his full name. So I was like, okay, cool. I know what I need. So I was texting my friends. All. So I said, I said, okay, cool. Yeah, we can go to dinner. What would you have in mind? 
And he was like, he says, well, you know, we're, um, we actually have a hotel. Uh, I said, I'm not going to your hotel. I am not going to your hotel. And he's like, he said, listen, we have a hotel that we rent out for a lot of our staff, right? He says, it's a beautiful restaurant across the street from it. Do you want to go there? Everywhere else in this area is going to be really hard to get reservations because of how many people are here for the festival. But I think I can get us in at that other hotel, at the, at the restaurant across from the hotel. I was like, okay, cool. So... I wasn't dressed cute. You know, I'm like sweating. You know, I'm not looking all cute. I'm out, I've been outside with him all day. And then so I was like, am I dressed okay? He's like, trust me, you good. We pull up to there, right? So we go over there. We basically got the equipment like an Uber Black or something like that. It was a nice car, but you know. So we get over there and we pull in. This is a nice restaurant, right? I'm like, hey, this is cute. This is really cute. You know what I mean? And so we go in there. They set us out in the patio area. So I didn't feel too under too um, underdressed. So we sat by like the patio area and everything like that. It was beautiful. So we're sitting out there. And as we sat out there and we actually have to sit down and talk, girls, I've already been around this man for hours. As we talk more and more and more, we got so, I just felt so much more connected to him. What I learned about him was this, was that he was in a relationship for a couple of years that had ended over a year ago. He was somebody where he puts a lot of his energy into his work, um, and that was his focus. He was very close to his mother. I do remember him talking about that, being very close to his mother, and just a nice guy. And in fact, he didn't live that far from where I lived. So that was like, wow, I didn't realize that. When I say not that far, I'm talking about like within 10 miles of where I live once we start kind of talking about that. And so we just started chit-chatting, chit-chatting, chit-chatting. And I realized that this man was giving me a lot of his time. And so I had to say to him, I said, don't you have to get back to work? You are giving me a lot of your time. And he says, you don't believe you're worth this much time? I said, I blushed. I blushed. I was like, I said, well, I mean, I mean, I do, but I mean, you. Can, this is your thing. He's like, listen, listen, listen. I got staff. I got business partners. It's taken care of. Don't even worry about this, all right? I'm good. I'm good. And I was like, oh. I said, okay, all right. I'm just going to lean into it. He says, you know, I have to say something. Now, listen to what he said. Listen to what he said. Listen to what he said. I swear to you, he said this. He says, not to tell you, he says, you know, since my breakup, I really haven't been dating much, but I've been trying to push myself to like get out there and you know meet people and connect with people and just you know just I want to connect with people you know I'm not sure if I'm ready for a relationship yet but I know that I want to connect with people so you know when you were standing there I just forced myself to say hi when I saw you again I forced myself to come over to you he said I pushed myself and here I was thinking that he was just some confident guy he pushed himself to do that and I was like you know coincidentally you know, I kind of um, pushed myself to come out this weekend as well, blah, 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 because I would have been at home otherwise, and I wouldn't have been able to meet you. So that night, we hung together. And I know you got your babies with you, so I'm not going to say much more than this. We hung together all night long, okay? My friends, whatever little hotel room they had, I never saw that room. I never saw that room. I never saw it, and I'm glad I didn't, because I was not trying to sleep in the room with four other people, okay? Because they got they had their little room. Uh, uh no, no. I was I was taken care of. I was taken care of. And so after that weekend, thank you for sharing this video, Katrina and Nancy and Rosalind, because it's going someplace, okay? After that, and I was a good girl. I was a good girl, okay? I was a good girl. I just didn't go back to my room. All right, we're gonna leave it at that, okay? And so, anywho. After that weekend, I was like, you know, I had to head back, obviously. And so when I was leaving, he says to me, he says, um, can we stay in contact? I just don't want this to be like a this, just this weekend thing. And I was like, well, we can absolutely stay in contact. I think that would be great. And so we exchanged information. And I'm thinking maybe I'm not going to hear from him for days. I'm thinking I'm not going to hear from him for even weeks. I'm thinking that maybe I won't even hear from him at all. You know, this was just a beautiful moment that I can tell my friends about. But, you know... And girls, I was so forward to tell my friends all about him, honey. Okay, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I'm usually not a cuddler, but in his case, I oh cuddle. Oh. Anywho, so um, so then I get back. I wasn't even back the full day, right? So I remember I got back. I probably made it back home by mm, four o'clock. I want to say it wasn't even seven p.m. And who do I get a call from? Not a text message, all right? Not a text message, not a FaceTime, a call. Do, 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 do. Um, hello? Hey, this is Gary. Oh, I didn't recognize the number. I didn't recognize the number. Yeah, um, this is actually my other number. Save this in your phone as well. 
And in fact, I'm gonna give you another number as well. He said, this is my business, the other phone is my business number. So by the time I had like three numbers from the one that I met him, he had this phone, this phone. He's like, so, you know, different times I'm using different phones anyway, you know, just had these, and I get it, you know, I have different numbers. And so he's like, so just if ever you need to reach, you can't reach me on one, this the other, but I just wanna they have the little electric stuff, but we gotta generate, so kick right back in. But anyway, I'm getting to the best part of the story, so y'all gotta rock with me, okay? So listen, he says, I just wanna give you my number. If ever you need to reach me, you can reach me on any of these numbers, but I just wanna let you know that it was really a pleasure to meet you. I wanna let you know it was really a pleasure to meet you. And I was like, well, it was a pleasure to meet you too. And he said, and I wanted you to know that um, if it's all right with you, I would like to see you again. I would like to see you again very soon. I said, Ooh, it did it again. Okay, we're back, we're back, we're back. Sorry, so sorry. I'm trying to get y'all the story the best way possible. He said, and if it's all right with you, I would love to see you again. I would love to see you again, right? I was like, I would love to see you again. Tracy Taylor says, I did get the real phone number. Tracy Taylor said you got the real phone number. I think that that's the end of it. Because what happens here in different parts of South Africa is that the electric everywhere will um, sometimes, it will jump. And so you have to go over to your generator or backup power supplier, solar power. It just is what it is, honey. But listen, we're talking about the story. So anyway, um, so I, we're back. So anywho, um, he said, I would love to stay in contact with you. I said, I'd love to stay in contact with you. He said, I would like to see you again. I said, I would like to see you again too. So listen, 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 listen. So I said, well, you know, let's just connect later in the week and we can figure out when. He says, you're not going to get rid of me that easily. I said, what are you talking about? He says, you're not going to get rid of me that easily. You're going to tell me it's late in the week and I ain't going to hear from you again. I said, okay, so when do you want to see each other? He said, what are you doing tomorrow night? I said, that's a Monday, baby. I said, I said, that's a Monday. I said, I said, I'm, I'm going to be working during the day. He said, what about the evening? I said, well, I'm getting ready for Tuesday. He said, well, how much you got to do to get ready for Tuesday? I said, oh. and he says, come on, just say yes. Oh, he said it just like that. He said, come on, just say yes. Just say yes. Thank you for sharing this video, Sharon and, and um, Tabitha in Houston. Thank you for sharing. Let me know you when I shared it. He said, just say yes. I was like, because I remember talking about saying, my, I want this to be my year of yes. And so I said, okay. And I was like, yes, yes. And he says, all right, cool. And he said, what kind of food do you like? And I said, I said, honestly, I really like Ethiopian food, but I feel like I haven't had great Ethiopian food um, here in, um, in um, LA just yet. And I've been in LA for a couple of years at that point. And then he said, all right, cool. I know a place. I know a place. I said, all right, cool. And so he says, so are you comfortable with me picking you up? Or do you want me to meet you there? Right? I thought about it. I thought about it. I thought about it. And I was like, I have spent the whole weekend with this man. I said, but I can't be letting him know where I live. Because like, what if he, you know, I don't know. I don't know. You know, what if he going to get sprung on me and act kind of crazy? You know, I've had that before. You know, mm -mm. I'm just saying, honey, when you, when you know what you're doing, honey, sometimes this man gets sprung a little bit. We'll talk about that another time. So anyway, listen, 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 listen. So I said, let's just meet there. Let's just meet there. So he told me where to meet. And we went to this Ethiopian restaurant right on Fairfax in LA, right? Right in Mid-City, LA. Y'all know something about Fairfax where there's a lot of Ethiopian restaurants. So we go there and when we get in there, it wasn't a big restaurant. We sit there and we just talked all night. It was so amazing. And when he came in, I have to say what he was wearing. This time he was actually dressed in like business attire. Honey, he had like a nice little, like a nice buttoned up collar shirt on. He had nice pants on, some nice loafers, like they were Fairgama or something like that. And he looked like he was coming from a business thing. So I saw him in a completely different light. He even had glasses on. And I'm just like, I said, look at you, look at all professional. He says, well, this is how I normally um, look. He says, I've got a couple businesses. You don't say. He says, I got a couple businesses. Um, one here, I'm having another business um, on the East Coast as well that keeps me pretty busy. Um, but yeah, so the one you saw me at, I'm just a partner in that business for that festival. That's not my primary responsibility. But yeah, I got a couple things going on, so I had some things today. But I wanted to see you, so literally I came right from my last meeting and came right here to spend time with you. I was like, okay, so he's creating room in his life for me. So we sat and we talked and we talked and we talked and we talked. It was so uh amazing and you know what the best part was as we were sitting there talking 
under the table, he had his hand on my knee. And as we were talking, he just was gently rubbing his hand on my knee the whole time. I just felt so comfortable. Every time I needed to like get up and go to the restroom, you know, he would say, you good? All right, cool. You know, he just was, he just was so attentive to me. After that, we went um, to, um, where was it? Oh, right on, oh, it's right on uh, Wilshire, the hotel, the peninsula. We went up to, to the peninsula to have, um, to have um, dessert there in the restaurant. It's like a restaurant on the first level. It's gorgeous. If you're ever in, in Beverly Hills, go over there. And so anyway, we go there and as we're walking in there, honey, he wouldn't even let the doorman open the door for me. He opened it for me. He just was giving me gentlemen. He was giving me masculine. And he was just so affectionate. He was open. He told me about the lessons he learned from his last breakup and everything like that. Now, I told y'all this. I told y'all this. I told y'all this. The, over the weekend when I spent the, that, that evening with him, I was a good girl. I was a good, you know what I mean by good girl? I'm trying to keep it PG. Y'all know what I mean, okay? I was a good girl. I was a good girl. Literally cuddled, that's it. I swear to you, I swear to you. If I, told, if I did more, I'd tell you, okay? You've seen my other stories. Thank you so much, Stardom Shine, for sharing this video, okay? If I did more, I would tell you. You know, I'm always open to telling y'all that, but I didn't. I was such a good girl, and it helped because he was such a gentleman. He never pushed in that direction, literally, just cuddle. So anyway, I mean, listen, maybe a kiss on the cheek. That was it. That was it, I swear. And so anyway, we hung out there and we had such a nice time. And then he said to me, um, he said, he said, when am I going to see you again? And I tell you this, when a man likes you, you don't have to wonder when he wants to see you again. They are very, very, very forthright and very direct. That's why you, when y'all be like, he didn't ask me out again. What does that mean? Mm, it means what it means. You know, masculine energy loves to kind of tell you what they want. So, and so um, I said, I don't want this night to end. I don't want this night to end is how he said it. And I was like, well, I have to go. I have to work in the morning. He said, what time you got to be at work? I said, well, I kind of work from home. <laughs> He's like, you work from home and you have been complaining about going out? I was like, yeah. He's like, what time is your first meeting now? What time you got to start? I was like, I said, um, I was like, I looked at my little calendar on my phone. I said like 11, 11, literally my first meeting was at 11. He's like, so really you ain't got nothing to do in the morning. I said, where are you going with this? Where are you going with this? Right? He said, where I'm going with this is one way or the other. I love to spend the rest of the evening with you at your home. Or if you want to spend it with me at my home, either way it goes. I, I feel like, why not? We enjoying this vibe. He called it a vibe. We enjoying this vibe. It's feeling good. Why stop it now? <sighs> I was in my year of yes. In my year of yes. Thank you, Jackie Johnson, for sharing this video. Because I was like... I'll go to your place. I'll go to your place, right? I said, before I go there, I said, let me see your driver's license. He was like, what? I said, give me your driver's license. He gave me his driver's license. I took a picture of it. I certainly did and sent it to my friend. And I said, is this the same address you live at? He said, yes, that's the same address I live at. I said, okay, cool. I sent it to my friend. I said, I'm going over here. If you don't get a text from me by, I think, it, I said, like, by midnight, then send the cops here, right? And I showed him it as I was texting it. He was laughing, like, you are so serious. I said, I am very serious about, about my safety. I may be in a year of yes, but common sense still lives, okay? Um, am I blushing now? Oh, my God. Um, Ellen Nell says, I'm blushing. Oh, my God. So, anyway, it was such an amazing experience. So we get to his building, okay? Now there's a part of LA, and this part of LA is called, oh, what is it called? Like Beverly Grove, right? It's a beautiful neighborhood, and I know that neighborhood pretty well because when I first moved to LA, I lived over there, okay? It's a beautiful neighborhood, and they got these beautiful houses, like these modern houses that look kind of boxy outside, and they stand out because the rest of the houses are like Mediterranean kind of houses, but he had a house like that, so we pull up to the house, and you go there and when you pull up to the house, I remember his, his garage door was like this black glass where you could see the cars inside of the, inside of the garage. It's like some high end stuff, okay? And so I'm in this moment, I'm realizing this guy is not just well off, he's rich, right? So we go into the house, right? So we pull into the garage, go into the house, but you don't you need to go into somebody's house for the garage. You want to do like the laundry room. So go through the laundry room, and this was the one redeeming thing for me, okay? I'm like, this house is amazing. He's perfect. What's wrong with him? His laundry room was a mess. You know how your, like, your garage connects you in through the laundry room? His laundry room was a horror show. It looked like my laundry room. So in that moment, I was like, oh, at least I feel like we're, I'm not like the only one, right? 
So anywho, I go in through the laundry. We go in there and I'm like, you need to do your laundry. He's like, he's like, I haven't called my housekeeper in a while. I was like, okay, well, you need to call him or her soon because you need to do your laundry. So anyway, he said, shut up and just walks me in. We walked in there. This was a gorgeous house. He had beautiful artwork on the walls, beautiful furniture. It smelled divine. It smelled amazing, like an MJ Harris candle, I might add. All right. No, anyway, it smelled amazing. The kitchen was clean, everything like that. So I did what you always do when you go into a man's house. All right. I said, is it possible for me to go to the um, restroom really fast? And so he's like, sure. So I went to the restroom because I always do a spot check in the restroom. You can tell everything about a man by his restroom. I went in there. You know what a spot check is, right, honey? I look on the side of the toilet, on the side of the toilet, on the side, so you know where you bolt the toilet to the ground? Is it clean down there? Okay, that means you really clean. All right, is it clean down there? Check, it was clean. I lift the seat up. Is it clean on the on the seat and on the seat and on like the, the toilet? Check, it was clean. I looked at every little piece and I was like, okay, this is clean and everything like that. I looked in the little cab and see what's in there. Well, nothing, wasn't much in the cab, it's just you know toilet tissue and all that kind of stuff. Wasn't nothing crazy going on there. And so anyway. I was in there for a while, so you know, of course, you got to flush the toilet, act like you really did something in there, right? Flush the toilet, ran the water a little bit. Meanwhile, I'm texting my friends as the water's flushing in the, in the sink, and I'm like, this house is amazing. So, anywho, I come out of there, and as I come out of the bathroom, right, he's standing in the kitchen, leaning up against the countertop, like this. He's standing, and he's so tall, so he's leaning up against the countertop, and he says, come here. He reaches his arms out like he wants to hug me. He says, come here. And so, I was like, I was like, you have a beautiful home. He says, he says, come here. And then... And then as soon as I come over to him, he leans in and just embraces me mm, right there. And it was so amazing. He buries his face in my neck and says, I've been meaning to tell you this for a while. You smell amazing. You smell amazing. And I remember he said, as, as that smell, you smell amazing. And I was like, thank you so much. And he smells so good too. Honey, we sat there by his pool. He has like a fire pit by the pool. We sat there all night talking and talking and talking. Now, you have to understand this, honey. I didn't have much going on in my life back then. All I was doing back then, I would get on camera, do videos for y'all. That's all I had to do in my life was I'd get on camera, do videos for y'all. And that was it. You know what I mean? I, you know, I really wasn't parenting at that time. I had a lot of free time. Like I said, my, my sofa and my YouTube, you know, was really all I had going on. And so, anywho, um, we sat there by the pool. And he says, you, you say, you, you sure you don't have to be at, on your first call until like 11 a.m.? I was like, yeah. He said, then stay here tonight. He was so forward. Now, you know, sometimes when you don't like a man anymore, you're like, ah, oh, he's doing too much, right? So I was like, okay, I guess. I was like, but I have to be up early. You know, the traffic can be crazy. He's like, well, that's cool because, you know, traffic in L.A., you know, it's, it's not that bad after like 930. So just leave at 930. You'll be back home in time to get on your meeting. It's cool. And it's a call. So can't you just do it from your phone anyway? Do it from the car. He had a solution for everything I had. I was like, oh, this is the kind of man I need in my life, honey, because I will give a man a million excuses just so that I can be. Don't we get comfortable within our own our own flow and get within our, we in our rut? And we had all the excuses on the world, in the world about why we don't want to do nothing different. So sometimes you need that kind of person to push you out of it, you know, but it needs to be the right person. So otherwise. He's just being pushy. So I was like, okay, Gary, I can do it. He's like, all right, cool. And so we go on. He says, come on upstairs and we can, you know, let's just, you know, let's go to bed. The sheets were clean. The sheets were clean. I peeked in his closet. Immaculate. Everything was put away, but not like psychopath clean. You know what I mean? But clean for a man. Very clean for a man. You know what I mean? It was so nice, honey. So I go into his bathroom before, because I was like, I said, but let me freshen up before bed. I go into his bathroom. Now, that's the real tell. When you go into their bathroom, honey, I, I, I quietly open all the drawers. Book in there. You got anything in there? You got something that somebody left behind? Some woman or some man been here? Does it look like two people live in here? Hmm. I'm looking for everything, honey. I'm looking for everything. Honey, had a little medicine cabinet. I quietly. And I just quietly, now here's how you quietly open a medicine cabinet. Don't tell nobody I told you this, okay? So what you gotta do, you gotta time this the right way, okay? What you gotta do is you gotta cut the water on for the sink real loud and cough while you open it. So cut them. <coughs> I did it like that. It, it, it works. So I looked in there, 
nothing too crazy in there. He did have like a, like the little hair loss stuff in there. That's fine, honey. I needed some for myself anyway. And so I was like, that's all he got going on in here. All right, we cool, we cool, we cool. You know what I mean? So I'm just looking through everything. It's clearly a single man's house. How do I know that? Because even he had two sinks in the bathroom, his stuff was literally all on one side. The other side of the sink was like hotel clean. Nobody used that side of the sink, literally. Okay? It wasn't looking like it was two sides of nothing going on. It was just him only on one side. So anyway, I'm like, okay. So I, I come out there and I'm like, I don't have anything to put on. Because, honey, I'm not jumping in there, you know, looking like the day I was born. Uh-uh. I still got to be classy. Even though his name was gorgeous, honey. And I was in my gear of yes. Okay, so anyway, he says, um, he says, well, you know, um, here, put this on. He throws me a jersey, a jersey. I put, I look at this jersey. I'm like, what's this? It looked like it was for a college basketball team. I don't know basketball, but I can tell, you know. And so I was like, I said, it's like a college basketball team. He said, yeah, I used to play. Okay, okay, okay. Even more to the story when I share it with my friend. So anyway, because you know you already got your story coming together for when you get in the car and going home so you can call your um so you can call your best friend and tell them all about it, honey, all right? So I put that on. I already had a cute little little a cute little little set on. You know what I'm saying? You don't ever step out the house without a cute little set on, right? So anyway, I was I was already covered for down below, right? So I get in there and I'm laying on my side. Well, what I made my side of because I already determined it's gonna be my side of the bed, right? So I so I'm laying over there and he said, he said, get over here. And yeah. He says, get over here and yanks me closer, yanks me closer with his arm, right? And literally, I fell asleep in his arms, laying on him, laying on him. It was such a beautiful experience, such a beautiful experience, honey. Now, let me tell you this. He was so gorgeous. Oh, my goodness, honey. His chest, oh, it felt like he has not missed a day in the gym since he was four, okay? Just built to the gods, honey. I mean, everything wonderful, honey. I even looked down at the pedicure. Perfect, okay? I'm saying, okay? Everything was perfect. He did snore like a bear. He did snore like a bear. So that was one thing. I mean, but I could get over that, honey. I could get over that. And let me say the trick when you have a man who snores like a bear, okay? All you got to do when he snores like that is this. He can't lay on his back. That's just what it comes down to. And I ain't no doctor, no medical expert. I'm just telling you what I know to do. So literally what I do is when they snore real hard, they sleep real hard anyway, I just elbow them real hard. Not too hard. I ain't trying to break a rib. You know what I'm saying? I just elbowed him. And he like, hmm. And I was like, I said, sleep on your side. Oh, all right. So he laid on his side. And then while he getting back to sleep, that gave me enough time to make him sleep. So I was good. So by the time he was snoring again, I don't know if I heard it. But anyway, that got him together. But it was amazing, amazing, amazing. So, girl, I'm knocked out. I'm knocked out out anyway so i wake up in the morning honey my wig must have been on the floor honey i, I was that kind of sleep I, and I, the crazy thing is this, i never feel that comfortable sleeping in someone else's house or someone else's bed it, you never really unless i've been there for a while you see what i'm saying so anyway i am not out i wake up in the morning honey if i had a wig it would have been on the floor honey all right that little jersey i don't know where that went because i be getting hot at night all right i get hot at night so i probably took that jersey off at some point in the middle of the night honey. i don't know where that thing was probably was down there in the sheet somewhere i don't know i wake up in the middle of and I'm not a pretty girl in the morning, okay? My my voice is like five octaves lower, okay? So all this, ha, 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 I sound like this, all right? I sound like Gary in the morning, all right? So I'm like, I'm waking up, and I don't even know where I'm at. I'm like, where am I? And so I'm waking up. I'm looking around, and then I'm like, I figured out, I'm like, oh, I'm at his house. And next thing I know, the door opens, right? His little bedroom door here, like one of those double doors. He comes in, girls, a tray, a tray. He's got coffee, right? And he had two little milk things on, like little white hotel milk things on there. He said, I didn't know if you like regular milk or not. So this is regular milk and like, I think 2% or something like that. And he was like, and this is um, almond or oat milk, one of those two. He's like, so I got you. I brought you both. You want some coffee? I was like, I said, thank you. That sounds like, thank you. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> so he was attracted to my femininity. I hope I didn't repel him. I was like, thank you. <laughs> so I'm sipping it. And then, and then he comes in and he goes to give me a kiss. Gives me a kiss. Gives me a kiss. Oh my goodness. And I was so impressed by it because I know my morning breath was like fire. I know it was literally probably could have burned a hole through the sheets and, uh, and mixed with coffee too. And I was like, mm -mm, I, don't want, I don't want a kiss. It's like my morning breath. He's like, he's like, she doesn't give me a kiss. And so he kissed me and then we just chit chat for a little bit. I left. Girls, I kid you not, for the next couple months, I forgot how my own home looked. 
I would be at his house literally like every other night. Occasionally he'd come to my house, but his house was nicer than mine. He'd always say, why don't I come to your house? My house is all right. But I was like, his is real nice. And so, and so I was like, no, I like being at yours. It was nice, it was comfortable. I like being over there. No shade, I just like being over there. So anyway, I was with him all the time. Weekends I was with him. I was constant with him. Oh my gosh, I'm not going into too much detail because I know it's the middle of the day and I want to tell y'all too much about that part of it. Girls, top notch. Top notch. Let me say what was the best thing. He paid attention. Y'all can read between the lines, right? He paid attention and listened to me, if you know what I mean, right? So he, the way he would show up for me in that area was as if he was there to meet every need and every desire I could ever have. I'm leaving it at that. I'm not saying nothing else, all right? You ever been with somebody like that? Sometimes they just in it for them, and then sometimes they're for you. He was there completely for me, honey, every time. Girls, girls, girls. So for the next couple months, I was always, always, always with him. That's right, Sharika Russo. I'm not a pretty girl in the morning. I'm really not, honey, all right? Lash be falling off. I'm joking with you, but no, for real, I'm not a pretty girl in the morning, all right? My voice all deep. Mm -mm. But I spent all this time with him. It was so amazing. Thank you for sharing this video, Isaac and Nicole and Takia. Thank you for sharing. Let me know y'all shared it. We would spend all this time together. It was amazing. Oh, my goodness. And we were in our own little world. You know, I met a couple of his friends. He met a couple of my friends. But we were in our own world. And I realized that for me and him both, we were so similar because prior to meeting each other, most of our lives just revolved around work. And we met each other coincidentally at a time when we both were trying to open up to meet people. So we didn't have all this stuff in either of our lives to compete with. He would go to work. I would go to work. After work, he called me up. Hey, you coming by? After a while, I just assumed I was coming by. He would go by my. We were always together, always together. But here's where he broke my heart. And I don't think it was not his intention to break my heart. It was not his intention to break my heart, but it still happened. I remember it was a Thursday evening. Thank you for sharing this video and let me know that you shared it, Wendy, and Contessa Sales. Thank you for sharing it. Let me know y'all shared it so I can call y'all out. It was a Thursday evening. Like any other day, I went by his house, right? It was like I said, it was assumed I was going by. When I get there, um, he had one of those doorknobs where you just pushed in the codes and it opened the door. It wasn't like a key. It was like you kind of pushed the codes in like a pad and it just opens it. So I had the code. So I go in. And when I got in there, I remember I brought food with me. Because, you know, when I would go by there, I would sometimes bring food with me or whatever. So I bring the food in with me. And he's sitting there at, like, the kitchen counter. And he's sitting there like this. And he had papers in front of him, his laptop in front of him. And sometimes he'd be working when I got there. Thank you so much, Melody, for sharing this video, as well as Deborah. And he's, and he's sitting there with his head like this. And he looks so stressed. And I'd never seen him really stressed before. And so I was like, are you Okay. He's like, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Come over here, come over here, come over here. And then so he hugs me, buries his face in my shoulder. And this was a long hug. He didn't pull away. He just laying there like this. And then as he's laying there, I feel him. He's shaking like he's crying. Like he's crying. Thank you so much, Cecilia LeBlanc, for sharing this video, as well as May May Gibbs for sharing this video. He's... I'm like, I've never seen this man cry before. We'd only known each other for a couple months. Thank you so much, Marlene Sibbert, for sharing this video. I'm like, I'm like, hey, hey. I was like, what's going on? Is everything okay? I think maybe somebody died or something. And he says to me, I got some, um, I got some bad news. I got some bad news. I said, what is the bad news? And he pulls up the, sh the like the bar stool beside him. So sitting at his kitchen counter, he pulls up the bar stool, like slides it. <laughs> I sit in the bar stool. And he turns the stool towards him, like he spun. And he pulls me closer to him. He wraps his hands around my waist. So I'm sitting between his legs, like my legs between his legs, and his legs are outside of mine. And like he puts his legs on the base, he puts his feet on the base of the bar stool that I'm sitting on. And so literally, I'm like sitting right between his legs. He's a bigger guy, so I'm just wrapped up in his arms around my back. And he says. My mother. My mother had a um, my mother had a stroke. I said, I'm he talked to his mother every day. She was back east. I said, I'm so sorry to hear that. I know y'all were so y'all are so close. 
He said she had a stroke. Um, I'm going to fly out um, first thing in the morning to go see her. Um, I'm going to go out. I'm going to go see her. Um, I got I to gotta go see her. You know, I said, no, I understand completely. I understand completely. Um, and so I'm like, do you need help packing? Do you, what you need? Do you need something to help with the, the, anything? You, just pick up packages. What you need, right? Thank you so much for Shansville, Jacqueline, and Stan Rose Lewis. And so he says, I, I can't even think straight. I was like, it's fine. It's fine. That evening, he barely ate. We went to sleep. I just laid with him, and I remember the whole night, I just remember holding him, laying on me. And throughout the night, every now and then, you hear, I could feel <laughs> crying in the middle of the night. He just, it was so, he was going through it. This man was so close to his mother. That was one of the things that I loved about him. He was so close to his mother. So he goes out there the next day. I didn't hear from him for a day or two, which was fine. Um, but then he calls me, he says, she's not doing too well, right? Apparently, the stroke affected her where she became immobile, like she couldn't do as many things. This, she was a very active woman beforehand, but she couldn't do as many things, like couldn't move around or anything like that. Like, it really affected her. And, like, he's the only family that she really has, right, and vice versa. I mean, they may have had other families, but they seem to be the closest. And so he says, I think we're going to have to stay out here for a while. I said, that's no problem. That's no problem. And I didn't know what to expect. Stayed out there days, turned to weeks. We talked, you know, we kept talking on the phone, keeping up with each other. Weeks turned to months. And I'm not trying to be selfish. I wasn't trying to be selfish, but at a certain point in time, I had to ask him. I said, you've been out there for a while and no pressure on you, but do you think you'll be returning? He said, she's not doing well. I don't feel comfortable with her traveling. You know, I told you he had a business on the East Coast anyway, so it's not like it was com completely inconvenient for him to be there. I just think I need to be out here with her a little bit longer. You know, this is where my mother feels comfortable, to be quite honest, the way things are going. I don't know how much longer she's got. You know, with the stroke, they discovered she had tons of other issues. I don't know what it's going to be like for her. So I'm just, I just really want to spend time with her and be there for her like she's been there for me. I said, okay. So we stayed in touch, stayed in touch. It started to feel different after a while. It wasn't his fault. It wasn't my fault. It was just space and time. And he had another focus, his mother. And that's where his focus should have been. Eventually, she kept going and kept going, and he says, I think I'm just going to stay out here indefinitely. You know, I remember one weekend he flew out to L.A., you know, just to kind of get some things and take care of some business out there. But I saw him that weekend, but that was it. He said, I think I'm just going to stay out here. I really feel like I need to be out here with her. I'm feeling pulled to be out here with her. And he told me, I just don't think that it's realistic for us to continue seeing each other. I can't give you the time and attention you need, and you shouldn't have to put your life on hold waiting on me while I'm focused on this. As much as I wanted to be hurt, that I felt like I was missing out on the opportunity for my dream, man, as much as I wanted to say, no, I'll wait for you, I knew that wasn't a good idea. When someone tells you, don't wait for me, listen to them, listen to them. As much as I wanted to feel that way, there was a part of me that was selfless that said, I understand. I understand, I get it. Let's stay in touch wherever we can, but I understand. I don't think I ever cried that much in my life. I cried that week and I cried that week and I cried so much that weekend. I remember crying the next week. Oh, I cried so much. But I'll tell you the gift that he gave me. And I realized this gift when I was talking to my grandmother. I was crying. I was like, Grandma, I miss him so much. And maybe I should go out there. Blah, blah, blah. She said, uh-uh, he didn't invite you out there. He didn't. He handled his life. And he says, his attention's elsewhere. You got to live your life. And I said, no, no, no. And she said, you know, my grandmother's like my best friend. Half the time when I'm talking about calling my best friend, I'm talking about her. And so um, she already knew all about what happened that weekend and everything else in between. We talk about everything. And she said, don't you remember when you met him? That was a time in your life where you were saying you're going to be out there and you're going to say yes to stuff all the time. Well, guess what, baby? Maybe the gift in meeting that man 
was that he got you to start saying yes. Maybe he wasn't your prize, but maybe he was simply the, the temporary reward for you saying yes, just to remind you of all the good and unexpected things that can happen in your life when you get out of your rut and stop saying no and start saying yes to some unexpected things. I thought about it and my spirit immediately got light. And what occurred to me was this, the same thing I'm gonna share with you all. Sometimes a heartbreak is not a heartbreak. That breakup, that loss, that thing that you thought was gonna happen for you but didn't happen. No, 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 no. It's not that. Sometimes the good that came from that thing was a reminder to you that good is possible. That person that broke your heart, yes, it hurts that they left your life or that you had to leave their life. But what if their presence in your life was a reminder to you that you are capable of love and that you can love? Not everyone is meant for forever. Some people are meant just to wake you up and revive you so you can open yourself for what you actually desire and deserve. And that's what Gary did for me. He opened me up to seeing that I truly desired love. I desired companionship. And he reminded me of just how good it felt to have it. So I'm here to tell you this right now. If you're in pain, if you're missing anybody, just understand that behind all pain is power as long as you're willing to take the lesson from it. I love you all. I'll be back soon.